I bought my personal home for under $100,000. Let me break it down for you. So I bought this house on the market. It was listed for $40,000. I went to walk the house and I liked the layout, but it needed a full gut rehab. So I made an offer of $27,000 and I eventually negotiated with the seller and we ended up at a price of $32,500. This is how the house looked like before. As you can see, it needed a full renovation. Everything had to be redone. So I funded this deal with a private lender. This is the same private lender I've been using on all my flips the past several years. And he let me borrow the purchase and rehab price 100%. So I had no money out of pocket on this deal. I borrowed $95,000 from the private lender. And don't worry if you're just starting out or if you're newer and you don't have these relationships yet, you can still get the same type of loan, but with a hard money lender. They'll be a little more expensive, so make sure your deal's a good deal, but it's the same concept. I ended up spending $60,000 to renovate the entire house. It's a two bed, one bath house with an extra utility room. It's only a thousand square feet, so it's not a really big house. However, it did come with an oversized two-car garage, which I really liked. So I closed on the house at the end of November 2020, and the first thing I did was demo. The whole project ended up using five 25-yard dumpsters, and that came out to a total cost of $2,500. I then paid $1,000 to my contractor to demo the house all the way down to the studs, and demoed the garage all the way down to the studs. The first step after demo normally is checking the foundation. The foundation is always the first thing you want to fix because everything else after that is affected if you try to fix the foundation later. So for this house, I had to replace some of the rotted wood beams under the house and the foundation repairs ended up costing me $4,000. After that, I had the roofers replace the roof on the main house and the garage and the combined cost for that was $5,000 labor and material. I then had some framing work I had to do. I put some handrails on the front porch and I moved the location of the doors a little bit to make that layout more efficient and that ended up costing me $1,500. I then replaced all the exterior siding around the house and had it painted for $6,500. I then put on a new garage door, which ran $2,000. So after the outside of the house was done, we started working on the inside. I had the electrician replace all the wiring and the plumber replace all the plumbing. This cost $3,000 each. And then I had the HVAC technician change out all the ducts and add in a new machine for the AC, and that cost $4,000. So the kitchen and living room were already an open concept when I bought the house, because I liked the design how it was already. I spent $1,000 to add insulation to all the walls, and then about $6,000 for a new sheetrock, hang, float, tape, textured, and painted. And then I spent $2,000 on flooring. So the kitchen cost $5,000 to completely redo. This includes new shaker cabinets, new stainless steel stove, new vent hood, new stainless steel dishwasher, granite countertops, cabinet pools, the farmhouse sink, and the tile backsplash. The fridge I already had from my old house, so that wasn't in the $5,000 rehab. I then spent $1,000 for new windows and $1,000 for a new front and back door. So this is the bathroom. The bathroom was a little more expensive. This whole bathroom renovation costed $6,500. I used a little nicer tile and some more nicer tile designs, which cost more on the labor side and the material. But it's a pretty big bathroom for such a small house, and it fits a double sink in there. Then there was about $5,000 in miscellaneous costs. This includes landscaping, small materials like nails, and small punch-out items. Just on tips of where to get materials, I get all my tile for the bathrooms and the kitchen backsplash at Floor Decor. If you don't have one near you, find a similar store that's like that. Also got the flooring, this luxury vinyl plank from Floor and Decor as well. It was only $1.89 a square foot. And then for the granite and countertops, you want to find a wholesale supplier that has stone, quartz, and granite. And they're usually cheaper than Home Depot, your big box stores. And then you also find an installer that can do that too. For the cabinets, a lot of people get hung up on this because normally when you look for new cabinets, it's super expensive. What I can say is try to find a wholesale RTA or ready to assemble cabinet supplier in your market. This is normally only in bigger cities. I had to get these cabinets from Houston because that's where I can get the warehouse with the wholesale RTA cabinets. And that's how I got them for so cheap. You have to assemble them. You have to have your contractor assemble them, I should say. But it looks great. They're soft closed doors, real wood, and they're really affordable. In terms of appliances, I just get it off either Lowe's, Home Depot, or Best Buy, whichever has the cheapest one and they always include free delivery, which always helps. 
For my recessed lights and my sink faucets, I like to get those off Amazon. You can get some pretty cheap ones off Amazon and I'll link them in the description below. But I really like those recessed lights as they're very modern and cheap and then their faucets as well. Stuff like doorknobs, towel bar racks, toilet paper holders and stuff like that, I get off Amazon as well. And then the shower door that I got, I got it off Wayfair. Hopefully that gives you an idea of where to buy items, but always shop around for the best price. Those are just the places I've found for the best price for those items. So to recap, I paid $32,500 for the house. I then spent $60,000 in renovations. And then I went and got a cash out refinance. The local credit union appraised the property out to $140,000 and I was able to pull out 80% of that value as a loan amount at a 3.5% interest rate. So that means a loan amount of $112,000. The closing cost ran $6,000. So my total all-in cost was $98,500. So just under $100,000. But since I was pulling out $112,000 for the loan, I ended up pocketing $13,500 tax-free. My current monthly mortgage for this house is only $471. I purchased, renovated, and then refinanced the property out using the Burr method, and I didn't use a single penny of my own money. I also walked away with a five-figure profit tax-free, and the whole process for this deal took about three months. Here's a summary of all the rehab costs spent on this project to transform this house, so you can get an idea of which parts of the house cost more money versus the others. So I've been living here a little over two years now, and I'm currently building my own home in Houston right now, and I'm gonna be moving there once that's complete. Like I mentioned before, my mortgage is only $471. That doesn't include property taxes or insurance, but with that added in, it's only coming out to about $650 per month because it's such a small property. However, I could rent this house for $1,250 since it's so nice and renovated and it comes with a two car garage. So that's already a $600 spread there. Obviously at the factor in repairs and vacancy and CapEx, but it's a pretty lucrative idea to have this cash flow. However, if I sell it now, since I've lived in it for two years, all my profits will be tax free. So it's kind of a hard decision I have to make soon, but let me know in the comments down below what you would do if this was your situation. So there you have it. I hope this video helped to show how you can actually buy a nice renovated house for under $100,000. Like I said, I just found this property on the market. I found it on Zillow. Anybody can search Zillow or Realtor.com and find the same deals. I didn't have to spend any money or time marketing, doing cold calling or direct mail. I just bought it off the MLS. If you have any questions on the process that I didn't cover or any questions on certain parts, leave a comment below and I'll respond to it and try to explain it further. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more real estate and personal finance content.